Good day everyone, welcome to the second lecture of Building Economics 1. So today we're going to look at Unit 1 and the first chapter of the study notes. So we're going to um, explore a little bit about just the basics of what um, Building Economics is. So I'm going to start with um, the first uh, part of our lectures um, or the study notes where uh, William Shakespeare is actually um, uh, quoted as uh, when we mean to build we first survey the plot then draw the model and when we see the figure of, of the house then must we rate the cost of the erection which if we find out outweighs ability what do we then put uh, draw anew the model in fewer offices or at least desist the build at all so in short it basically uh, just reiterates of that whenever you you want to build you uh, want to assess the cost before you actually start building and commit yourself um, that's the whole debate between uh, for instance lightweight steel and conventional building why don't uh, we see more lightweight steel buildings going up but with houses for instance uh, most families build um, buying a house or building a house will probably be the biggest investment that you will do in your lifetime so you don't want to get it wrong so uh, that is why people are very conservative when you start building uh, or getting into construction because um, the cost implications thereof is uh, can have big detrimental uh, effects if not properly planned so as mentioned in the previous lecture I just mentioned um, the project life cycle so from um, Kirkwood um, I just extracted this following diagram of um, how uh, a project usually works the bully in economics in general so you usually have a client someone with the money that wants to, to build it can be a developer public enterprises uh, government and um, homeowners or anyone like that they want a building to be built they've got an idea in their head and they convey that and they translate that um, and give it to uh, an architect or, or to a um, person that can actually interpret it and he outlines he or she outlines the design and the look at the strategic uh, items that is entailed um, for instance if you want to build a, um, a 150 square meter house you know you've got a bit of, uh, a building rate uh, of in Bloemfontein about 7,500 rand per square meter and um, now suddenly when the design starts um, now you end up with a 300 square meter house now suddenly the house will cost you double of what you initially had in mind so those are the outlines and things that usually plays into the initial stages um, do you have to ha add uh, certain sections in the building what type of finishes will you have on it um, so those are the outlines and the perimeters do you want to have it a lightweight steel pro um, structure or do you want to have a conventional brick and mortar building then you look at the whole life cycle cost um, what will it cost do I want to install solar or, or so uh, what will be my maintenance on the project then once that concepts and all of that information is conveyed you start with a design or concept and then um, the whole project life cycle is then considered again like I've mentioned in the previous lecture you've got open systems closed systems we're working with closed system a system approach on the project life cycle so the one section leads into the other the project um, um, becomes bigger and bigger as you go along and then you've got a detailed design then that follows um, on top of that and then you've got an evaluation occupancy evaluation the project is then basically implemented and then the client evaluates and actually occupies it and then um, the consultants or then the project team the con contract and everyone that worked on it 
gather gathered a whole lot of information and knowledge on the, um, the whole process and now they can apply it on the new project so that is more or less how the project life cycle works okay so bill um, in general economics is the study of the demand and supply of goods and services and then economics in is also a study of production and consumption of goods and transfer of wealth to produce obtain those goods so in general yes economics there's a supply and a demand um, for certain items same with buildings there's a supply and demand as well so building economics is a branch of general economics so if you've got a lot of trade you've got um, say lots of tourists um, entering into a certain section they have to stay somewhere so there's a demand for accommodation in a certain area thus um, the construction industry might be stimulated in that way so that um, more buildings are built in that area depending on what type of um, accommodation the visitors might be looking at will de uh, depict uh, what type of buildings are designed and constructed the emphasis falls on building in building economics obviously okay and it uh, is placed within a broader local international economics and uh, that video that i mentioned last week i hope or last time in the previous lecture i hope you guys had a look at it and you could see how the broader economics actually influence um, local uh, economics and that um, it is a whole system intertwined in each other so um, very important if you haven't watched that video I urge you please go and watch that video is that um, um, go scraper that of the B on the B1M channel uh, that is in China there's a whole lot of uh, examples of that but that's probably one of the most uh, well-known ones and then the last point is emphasis is how however on the building product itself in building uh, economics so usually with building economics in your fourth year uh, in construction finance uh, we dissect the relationship between accounting um, of a firm and the project uh, finances and how they interlink with each other where you have <clears throat> specific budgets that you have for a project but it's influenced by the company's capabilities to carry certain cash flows on top of that so um, very important to be able to make the distinction between building economics and general economics so building economics in general continued there's an, uh, a need to produce and integrate building principles in building pr uh, processes during the early stages of the design so if a developer comes to site and he wants to um, uh, do a new development usually ha he would have a couple of options of where he would invest his money or his resources thus he would like to know which of his possible developments will bring the highest um, earnings to him if it's in the public sector what will be the mo mo highest pro priority uh, if you're looking at um, Mangahoon for instance will the priority be to build an administration building for the admin staff or will it be to construct new roads to a new development or will it be to ensure that the water supply to the municipality is kept uh, well or the infrastructure is up to date so that private sector can maybe take over the uh, construction of certain areas or services uh, in a certain uh, development or area so economics uh, thus forms an integrated part of the process as mentioned and the benefits of implementing these principles during the early stages are okay so there's a whole lot of um, benefits of looking at the cost earlier on so that you can prioritize what is the most important project to to tackle first so you will manage your cost overruns so if you've got multiple projects you will see okay but i can't really do this one just yet let's let us just wait for the next financial year um, to maybe tackle this or let this project uh, get finished so that we can get some income so that we can finance the next project also 
and then managing uh, time overruns okay so um, if you have a scope uh, of the budget earlier on you can plan for for that so if the design for instance now of the 150 square meter house comes back at 300 um, squares you can cut back or say and reevaluate the design is this what we can really afford let's rather uh, just do this in phases let's just build a first section of the building and then the second section and so forth ensuring building design is completed within the scheduled time okay so um, it will give an indication okay this is the amount of money that we've got we need to uh, maybe do this section first so it does influence the time schedule as well and it provides complete picture of the project cost very important and integrate aesthetics and economy that what I've spoken about at the end of the last lecture the right brain uh, right brain and left brain uh, if an architect has a certain design in mind it addresses certain challenges and needs of the client um, so if you've got certain um, constraints and you can have a look at those costs early on you can make adjustments to still um, address those needs and those requirements with uh, within the budget meeting clients needs within the given resources that um, relates to the um, point just before this one and then meeting clients needs within the uh, given time very important as well create a product without uh, sacrificing quality it also relates to that and then consider life cycle costs rather than initial capital costs like for instance installing um, solar uh, panels uh, what will be the monthly cost on that so you might uh, initially have to uh, put out a little bit more capital but on a month-to-month -month basis you will pay off that installation much quicker and actually save in the long run or for instance uh, when you have to decide going for face brick or plaster which you have to paint each every five years or ten years um, whereas if you've got face brick you don't have to have you don't have all of that maintenance cost on top of the building provide a most economical solution for the construction operational cost again relates to the previous point uh, another example of that is uh, are you going to install gutters or, or not um, the implication of that is if you don't have gutters you have to install a, a concrete um, apron around the building for all the water that will fall off of the building that it doesn't uh, wash away all of the ground surrounding the building but you don't have to clean that um, gutters that you installed uh, which will make clog if it's not cleaned and will cause damage other damage to the to the ceilings and the interior of the building so those are the things that you uh, need to consider when working on the cost earlier on okay reduce maintenance on uh, cost to the minimum okay so you can plan for how you're going to maintain this building provide value for money to the client obviously uh, if you know um, that you can make the changes earlier on it will cost him less money um, in the end rather than being in construction and now suddenly one uh, wanting to make the changes which has a whole lot of other implications and then provide the highest um, building efficiency in the design okay so you want to try and be as economical as possible and then assist in making planning choices so now the client can um, decide do we really need this jacuzzi in our in our house um, is it really within our budget or not uh, and so forth bring innovation in the design and construction buildings so now you can also look at some innovation so maybe looking at um, recycling some of your water uh, installing a gray water system early on during construction is just much easier than doing it after the building has been completed um, it will also save you on pipe work and so on so you can maybe have a look at items like that
Okay, so one of the largest um, industries, um, construction is one of the largest industries um, in any nation, and it has a great impact on, on the nation's GDP, uh, work, employment, uh, and so forth. And it contributes to the GDP, GDP as mentioned, and it contributes to economic growth of a nation. It, it, um, for instance, taking an industry like tourism, the example that I used um, earlier on in the presentation. Uh, if uh, the construction industry provides a service to um, the tourist in industry by providing accommodation to in certain sections if needed. So um, that is uh, one way of distributing the wealth between different sections of the economy. Construction industry is an investment-led sector, okay? So because you have to put in a lot of capital, um, most people would like to make up that capital in some other way. Government forms uh, contracts with construction industry to develop infrastructure for administration, health, transport, uh, as well as education, etc. So the, con the government is also part of this economy um, that the construction econ um, uh, building economics is part of. And it provide uh, or private investors of there to make a profit. Mostly they're there to, to make a profit, but also to um, provide a service to um, certain needs. Okay, so the, <coughs> pardon. so the construction industry is quite di diversified and involves numerous role players such as professional consultants, property investors, property developers, contractors, material suppliers, the mining industry, um, IT services and so forth. In our last slide, I'll just show you just a breakdown of the GDP of South Africa to give you a bit of an insight into into this so construction is not just the three to four percent of the national gdp it influences a lot and it's influenced a lot by other industries which i'll touch on a little bit later okay so in this slide i just put up all the different um, industries that's usually published by stats sa each year and the contributors you will see mining cont uh, contributes to about 23 percent of the economy while you have agriculture which is also um, at a free uh, is this now yeah it's at three percent and you've got transport storage etc at um, nine percent um, 18 towards general government services, personal services at 6% and manufacturing you will see at 13%. So you will see that it, at first glance construction doesn't really um, contribute a lot. Before the pandemic it used to be um, just over 4%. Now with the pandemic and the economic decline it has gone down to uh, 3% and uh, just over 3% for the national GDP each year. But um, as I've mentioned previously, it doesn't really um, paint a true picture because the construction industry also stimulates a large section of the mining industry. Transport, uh, trade and catering and accommodation um, also influences the construction industry and the construction industry influences uh, trade and catering etc um, with a, a supply and needs um, if you look at construction uh, just the manufacturing services like manufacturing of steel windows um, and manufacturing of cement bricks and so forth uh, doesn't uh, really reflect in the uh, construction industry as such. So the GDP usually is related to direct um, construction industry um, contributions to the economy like salaries um, 
and use of um, plant and so on on the actual construction um, industry itself you will um, of and of the big construction companies contributes most to this so you can see that the economy and the construction industry um, or building economics and general economics how intertwined it is with the different industries um, so uh, just bear that in mind as we go through uh, the module and um, yeah try and relate it to this and that's more or less the first chapter of uh, the study notes so it's a very a uh, quick introduction to what building economics is and um, we're going to build on this in the next chapter. Thanks everyone.